Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. I'm in the shed tonight. We have a large um, LCD smart TV. It's a Chick, that's C-H-I-Q. Um, it's about a 58 inch. We'll have a look at the model number in a minute. It was dropped off at e-waste. It has some issues. I'm gonna see if I can fix it. Um, nothing to lose, let's have a go. So as you can see there, it's a fairly large, uh, quite modern, I'm not sure of the date, we'll check that out too in a minute. Uh, LCD screen and it's uh, there's the brand CHIQ I haven't actually heard of them before I did a bit of a Google they're just another um, Chinese brand I don't know how good a quality they are but I'll show you what this one's doing before we turn it over and check out the model number I'll put the model in the title if I remember and uh, yeah I think I have a use for it if we can fix it it doesn't have a stand for it unfortunately and the remote is with it, but it's lost the battery cover. However, it still seems to work. Let's turn it on and see what it does. Okay, power. I think it's turning on. I had it on before. I had it on YouTube. It has some issues when it's cold, but once it warms up, it's, uh, it seems to be okay. Now, that actually seems to be okay now. We might have to wait. Uh, I might have to... Oh, there we go. Did you see that? Yeah, we have some vertical lines going on. It's um, like stretching the picture out from any uh, text or any brighter patch. Um, you can actually see, let's get a bit closer, hopefully it doesn't blur too much on the film. You can see horizontal lines, but it sort of sprays up vertically from each uh, brighter section. And it flickers and it comes and goes. And there's sometimes some, oh, there's a bit of yellow color behind there. That's why I can see a yellow line. Uh, I did notice earlier too some some weird sort of striping in from this side when it was dark i can't see that now but there's definitely some picture issues and i think that it's likely to be bad solder joints so i'm going to um pull the main board out we'll have a look at it and we'll see if we can fix this um because it's not really watchable as it is and i left it a while before and it actually came good so we might do that first and see if it comes good again uh, and then we'll pull it apart so the TV's been on for about 20 minutes. I've been doing other things. I've just come back in here. It looks like it's gone to some sort of screensaver picture. And the picture looks fine. Let's see if we can go back to where we were. Is it going back to that screen? Yeah, there we go. And we have no lines and it doesn't seem to be flickering. So when it warms up, it appears fine. Although we do have some horizontal striping at the end here. And I think... I noticed it down the bottom before. You can kind of just see it there, but that's not so bad. It's still watchable like that, and it will be fine for me to run, uh, play YouTube videos and things on uh, as a smart TV, probably in our studio, if it doesn't flicker and get those lines it had before. So I think it's a problem that when it's cold, once it warms up, it, they seem to disappear, which makes me think it might be bad solder joints or a poor connection, and once it heats up, uh, things kind of resolve themselves but we don't want that happening every time we turn it on so I think it's worth investigating. So I've just turned the TV over let's have a look at the model details it's a, a Chick model U58H10 so 58 inch as for a date copyright 1992 to 2019 so it's not very old you would assume it's after 2019 because they put that date on there. The good thing with the back is I don't think we need to take the entire panel off. I think this, this section in the middle will come off. We can access the boards and probably just try to make sure all the ribbon cables are connected properly and uh, maybe have a look at some solder joints on the main board. Maybe the T-Con board. We'll have a look. Okay, there wasn't a lot of screws and it looks like the cover's going to just come away. I don't know, something's attached. Is there a wire somewhere? Ah oh, yes, the speaker wires. You won't be able to see this. I'll have to unplug them from the board. There we go. Speaker wires are off. And there's our power board. There's our main board. Quite a simple little unit. I think there's a T-Con board under there. So we'll check the ribbon cables. But... Um, I don't think there's a problem in the power board. I don't think the panel has the problem. I think it's something happening on the main board here. 
uh, or with a connection. Now that feels pretty warm. I guess they do run fairly warm. A bit of dust around. I guess we should make sure there's no corrosion anywhere. Pretty dusty. Now we're still going to have charged up capacitors here, so I won't be touching anything. As I said, I think the power board's going to be fine. Capacitors look good. That'll be power in from the board. This will be our signal going to the TCON board under here. So there may be a problem with that. There's certainly not much in these big TVs. I wouldn't worry about picking up one on the side of the road for scrapping. You've only got one small mid-grade board and a power board. You've got some finger strip boards along the front there with gold contacts on them, but really very little value in these things for scrap. I think what we'll do for a start is we'll take the main board out, we'll unclip the ribbon cables, and we'll just have a look at it all. We'll, um, I probably won't do any more at this stage because we would, don't want to do too much and then put it back together when we don't actually know what we did to fix it. So I'm thinking we'll test first to make sure all the connectors are okay. So we'll take the board off and the connectors off and just clean everything up and put it back together and see if it works. So there's the power wire off. Not sure what that little wire is. And these little ribbon cables you've got to flick up the top there and they should slide out. There we go. So they look clean, there's no corrosion there. We have some little wires here and I don't actually know what they do either. We better make sure we get them back on the right way. So I've just marked those with some dots so I know which one goes where. I'll undo the screws to the board. That was very loose. That can be an issue with uh, the old plasma TVs, I believe, that the earthing screws work loose and the boards fail to earth. That one wasn't so bad. Yeah, that one's okay. That's all we need to undo. Here yeah, we have uh, a couple of these wires are still taped here. We'll have to remove the tape. Okay, so there's our board. Not really much to it, is there? Looks a little dirty around the bottom there. Don't know if it's corrosion or just a bit of bit of grime. So maybe we better check to see if there's no corrosion on any of these solder points. Uh, this is where moisture can get in through the contacts, through the sockets, of course. But really, most of the works is just in here. Underneath, there must be complicated chip under there. All right, we'll look further at that in a minute. Let's lift this shielding off here. And then we have the T-Con board under there. Two more ribbon connectors. We'll unplug all of them, just in case there's any bad connections. And look clean enough, no corrosion there. Just two small screws hold the T-Con board down. So not much to that board either. Nothing underneath. Certainly been some dust and stuff getting from the edge of the TV though. So I think we'll blow some compressed air across these to make sure there's no muck on the where the ribbon cables go. And we'll put it back together and see what happens in the morning when it's cold. It's the next morning and it's chilly in the shed, so perfect for a cold test on this TV. I've put everything back together and made sure all the ribbon cables were clean and clipped in nicely. I've been doing a little bit of research and it's likely that there's bad solder connections on the main board and particularly on the main processor, which is under this heatsink. And it's a square chip called a BGA, the connections of which are little balls of solder 
all the way underneath it. I don't have one to show you at the moment. Any scrappers will be well aware of BGAs. You can't resolder them by traditional means. The only chance we would have would be to actually take the motherboard off and bake it in an oven. It does work. I've done it once before. It's not a recommended practice and it's not necessarily going to give it a long life. But if we don't have any success now with uh, reconnecting the cables and everything, we might try. We've got nothing to lose. Um, the only other way to fix this problem would be to replace the board and I don't think the TV is worth it. Okay, the TV is back together. I've got it in the upright position and I think the remote will work. The sensor's right underneath on the towel and you've got to be careful to rest the TV. Ah, oh, uh, we still have it. Yeah, we still have that striping. It's disappeared now. But we can still see some wavy black lines on this side. It's a bit more visible on the blue. Let's see what happens when we get the picture. I think that strobing's coming from fluoro. Hang on, I'll get back to the other side. Yeah, you can see some weirdness going on there. So it's just the same. I think it's a motherboard problem. We should um, perhaps try it. We've got nothing to lose. I don't have time today, but I'll get back to it soon. We'll whack the motherboard in the oven. And the idea is to reflow all the solder on the board. Hopefully we don't melt plastic parts or anything. You've got to get the temperature right. Let's just go to the YouTube and we've certainly got the same weirdness still going on. So we didn't fix it this way, but I think we'll have to try reflowing the solder on the motherboard. And if that doesn't work, well, we probably should scrap it anyway, but I might try it just purely for the experiment. So five minutes in, it's uh, still flickering. I'm on my favorite YouTube channel, of course. Uh, you can see how bad those stripes are. And when it flicks off, it's a good picture. Uh, and as it warms up, it gradually gets better and better. So we will try that experiment with the main board. We've got nothing to lose and the TV is not worth buying a new board for. So uh, yeah, we'll give that a go and see if we can save it. Now we'll have to check the temperature to put this in the oven for. I think it's only about 10 minutes, but oh, it obviously needs to be high enough temperature to just melt the solder. I suspect that those little plastic plugs there will not handle that. So I think I can take those out because they just push through the other side. Uh, and I think the heat sink will still be well attached, so there's no worries there. We might put a bit of foil over these connectors. I'm not sure if they'll handle it or not. Uh, there might be bits of plastic in the other fittings, but I think they'll handle, and of course the ribbon cable connectors, I think they'll handle the heat. As I said, if they don't, it's no great loss, but there's a few YouTube videos of people doing this, and I don't think, you know, you can't possibly remove those connectors. So I don't think it's hot enough to destroy them. Perhaps these ones will be okay, but I will take these little plastic ones off. They look quite susceptible to damage there. And I peeled off some tape that clearly wasn't going to survive. I don't know about these little foam cushioning blocks. They're covered in foil anyway, so perhaps they'll be okay. So yeah, I'll just take these little plastic ones out and then we'll work out the exact temperature. I'll have to do a bit of checking and put it on a tray and... Uh, while Christine's not looking, we'll bake it in the oven. Okay, we're in the kitchen and we've preheated the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. And I've got the board on a piece of baking paper, just in a steel tray. I think you could probably use cardboard. It's not hot enough to actually set it on fire. Uh, I did take off those little plastic pins there and I took off the uh, silver lined um, cushioning pieces underneath because it needs to sit flat. We don't want solder flowing where it shouldn't. We don't want parts dropping off. Uh, so it's time to put it in. It'll probably smell a fair bit, um, which isn't such a problem other than it's like just a plasticky chemical smell. It won't be anything dangerous in the solder because they use lead free solder nowadays. There we go, we'll set the timer, we'll give it 10 minutes and then we'll take it out to cool down. Sorry Coco, it's not lunch. <laughs> so just like that, 10 minutes have passed. It doesn't smell too bad in here. Faint chemical smell, perhaps. Uh, there we go. Um, doesn't look anything different. The tray will be hot, so let's get that out. And the plastic parts look like they've survived. The tray is very hot. I need to put it down. I'll um, just take it out on the deck to cool down, I think. 
So there we go, that looks fine. There doesn't look to be any damage done. It's not hot enough to cause any of those plastic uh, connector blocks to melt. So that's great. We may have been able to leave those little standoff things on there, but they were easy enough to remove. So I'll leave that cool. I can feel the heat radiating off it, so it, radiating off it, so it got quite warm. Hopefully reflowed the solder where it needed to. We'll leave that cool and we'll put it back in the TV and just see if we've had any success. Okay, it's a few hours later. I have got the TV back together and it's certainly not hot anymore. It's, um, as I said, a couple of hours. I've been around at mum's place unloading the van from my last farm trip. Time to power it up and see if we've made any difference at all. Okay, the standby light's gone off. Uh, we haven't made any difference. Looks like it's just the same. It's cleared up there now. Let's wait until it finished booting and we'll go to the YouTube section. Oh, it is looking better. Yeah, still got some weirdness happening. Maybe I didn't bake the motherboard for long enough. Maybe it's a fault that can't be fixed by that. It does work quite often and there's plenty of YouTube videos on a bit of guys doing it. Uh, not only with TVs, but also with uh, phones, tablets, computers. The BGA chips just simply, uh, because of the heat and cooling cycle when you turn them on and off, the, um, the ball grid array are very susceptible to fracturing. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have no success. Why is that not going to YouTube? Try again. Okay, it appears to have come good fairly quickly this time, so maybe I partially fixed it. Uh, perhaps I needed to leave it in the oven a bit longer, but if it's going to fix itself this quickly when I turn it on, perhaps I might use it in the studio and just see how it goes. Uh, I could possibly try baking the board a little bit longer next time, because it certainly appears to be better. Okay, guys, I'm going to call this exercise a fail. As you can see on the screen, it's still got that stripiness going on. It comes and goes. Sometimes it happens when it's hot. I've left the TV on for a while. So we haven't fixed anything, but I've taken you through the process of how you can fix things. I've uh, had success fixing another TV like this once. It had very bright horizontal lines and no picture, and I baked the motherboard and it worked perfectly for many, many months, and eventually I sold it. I don't know if it's still going. I believe it's not so much a permanent fix, but then again, was the board permanently good anyway because the flexing they're such thin boards the flexing causes the modern day lead free solder to crack so one could argue that the boards were never a permanent op operating um, concern but anyway this didn't work but I've taken you through the process I'm going to call it a fail but I'll still put the video up um, someone might have some other ideas about what is wrong with it I'm going to scrap this out if it was a really good brand TV, um, like a Sony or a Samsung or something of much better quality, uh, although one could argue that what's good quality these days, it might be worth trying to market the power board because I'm sure that's okay. But in this case, it's a bit of a cheapie. I'm going to scrap it, get it off the bench and get on to another project. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate any comments you might have. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.